Hey, what's up everyone? In this episode, we're doing the first update of 2018, so let's get to it. So on this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the tank, look at the growth that's happened in uh, recent weeks. It's been a while since the last update. It's been a while since the last video, but with things with work and uh, a lot of craziness going on, uh, I have just haven't had the time to get to it. But now things have settled down. Some issues with work have been resolved. And uh, now there's going to be a few more videos coming and more frequent, as you'll see. So with that being said, let's get to the tank and check out the growth. Okay, so here we are in front of the tank, and basically the system itself is doing really well. Um, mo all in all, everything is growing really, really well. There are some issues with the tank, but then again, what would it be? Uh, a reef tank without some issues uh, is rare in this hobby. Uh, what it, my issues are is, as you can see on the right-hand side towards the bottom where the mushroom rock is, uh, it's paling out a little bit, and that's basically a result of the Astorina star problem I have. Um, a Harlequin will be purchased soon for that, uh, but with the holidays and everything, kind of everything took a back burner as far as preventative measures on some of the pests I have. Along with that, there is still the Aptasia issue in the tank. Um, I do have an idea of what I'm going to do to remedy that situation as well, and it involves um, Aptasia eating nudibranchs and um, just some of the people that I know, uh, one person in particular I got to speak with and uh, get some of those. But again, that'll be in a future update when that gets put in the tank. So as far as the growth and the growers in the tank, then we're going to have to zoom in now and uh, focus more uh, up close and personal on those. So let's get to that. So here we are starting with basically uh, a lot of the videos start out at the trachea. Uh, since the last time it's grown pretty huge and that front lobe that you see is almost touching the glass and on some occasion when it fills up a lot with water after a feeding it will touch the glass. So um, that's a good place to start out with the growers at least. A lot of people have seen this uh, coral over the uh, basically the months from when I first got it as a hitchhiker but you can see in the back the button scoli is now completely off the plug and onto the sand. Uh, I put it there and really could not get the plug all the way down with the amount of uh, growth it's had so it is off of that and onto the sand. Um, you could see right here um, the Favias are growing really, really well, and it's particularly this one right here is now grown to the point where it's encrusting downwards onto the rock that it's sitting on. Now starting with the acans, we'll start at the uh, bright orange ones that were very, very tiny when I first bought them. Now they're to the point uh, where they've basically tripled in size from the time that I got them and so much so that the one side that you can see is growing off the disc and basically they're going to be put on a rock uh, at some point along with um, a lot of the eight cans that I have on the sand um, that are growing too big for where they are. Uh, you can see the pink ones that were on that one plug have grown as well as the orange ones. All the eight cans are really, really doing well. Right here is the birthday cake coral and you can see how much it's spread um, the sweepers are out always looking for food and it's stretched to that one rock as you can see and also um, so is the brain coral both doing well and liking where they are. Right here you can see the mushroom rock and how, just how many there are now. Um, size wise they're not really growing really really big but they are multiplying a whole lot so uh, the next phase is to kind of switch up what I'm feeding them, uh, try different blends that will allow them to grow in size. The night before Christmas, Favia is really doing well. 
and so are the rock flower anemones and they're about the size of half dollars now. Now right here is the red Montipora cap. Um, it's completely grown to the point that the plug that was glued down on that rock is not able to support it so you can see it's leaning uh, on the other edge of that rock. It's probably going to encrust to it, but the growth on this has been ridiculous. Uh, one of the big growers in my tank is this piece. Now moving to the left of the Montipora cap, you can see on this rock, this is where predominantly a lot of my favorite SPS are. Um, all of them have encrusted. You can see this one right here that I got from Aquarium Kiss and is encrusted down on the plug and the ones from Fish of Hex have really taken off and encrusted right onto the rock. The Jason Fox Bonnie Coral has really, really taken off as well to the point that, to the point that you can see how far it's encrusted onto the rock right there. I'll take a side shot of this in a, in a few seconds to just show you exactly how much, because the back of this coral is uh, something really, really special to see as well. Moving to the left, you can see there in the back is the green Montipora cap from Fish of Hex, as well as uh, the green encrusting Monty. Uh, basically, this one's really taking off and growing up towards the light. So lighting the tank with the Ocean Revive seems to be providing enough light for the SPS towards the middle to upper part of my tank to really allow them to, to grow a lot. You can see right here, all this section is all SPS coral. And especially areas like this, you can see the, the Monty pore that I tried to graft. Um, is The red is now starting to grow over the green edge. So I wanna see if they actually blend together. The pink chalice from Worldwide Corals, as well as the purple Monty pore from Fish of Hex. You can see how that's spread out onto the rock and is now uh, fully encrusted onto the rock. Right here is the Hollywood Stunner Chalice and you can see just how far this has come. It's really taking off and it's filling up this section of my overflow tower really well. Along with the two digis that I have, that should be enough to fill out the entire section. Over here, the last remaining Euphelias that I have along with the other frag of, the, of this Hollywood Stunner Chalice are, are continuing to do well. They're popping more heads and this uh, frog spawn right here has really taken off in the last, I'd say last week, filling up more and more. The one in the middle is a little irritated right now, uh, but it does really well. The, one, the What you see in the back are the Pandora Pallies from, from More White Corals. They love this spot and continually pop new heads on them. Now, as I promised, here is the side shot of the Jason Fox Barney Coral. You can see how the back is getting more and more of the, the branches coming out of it. And that's basically, I figure that's primarily where the more branching is gonna occur besides the tips of the branches that already exist towards the top. But after a while of seeing this coral straight on and then coming around the back and seeing this, I was amazed to see what was going on behind the coral. One of the last corals that I'm going to take a look at is the Acan Bower Banker. You can see from this angle just how the new heads are forming underneath the main one that was at the top. And this thing eats ravenously. Every time I feed it, it's the first one that closes up and basically engulfs anything that's on it. So basically that's it as I pan out to a, a full shot again of the tank. Uh, the success of the tank basically I, I can't say... Um, Anything but the, the new lighting is improving the way that the corals are taking and growing and coloring up. The feeding regimen that they're on, as well as the dosing I do with calc, um, more and more corals are, are taking up more of the alkalinity and calcium um, daily as the SPS start to, start to grow and take off. What's going to probably need to be done in the future is switching to like two part um, to supplement the calc washer because I'm at the point now that I can't uh, add any more to my auto top off and I'm going to have to make up the difference with two part dosing uh, but that will be on another video probably setting up a doser uh, that I do have and uh, going through the calculations and, and, and knowing what to dose out of the two part as far as what the tank will need on a daily basis. 
So a lot of factors combined, water changes, um, dosing, the feeding regimen, and lighting uh, basically have allowed this tank to um, continue to grow, do well, and really the reality is once you get into a routine, it's fairly, fairly easy to take care of the tank. Uh, there is a lot to look at as far as parameters, but once you get into a, a habit of testing the tank and, and doing it on the same day at the same time, it gets to be kind of an easy, uh, you can't even call it a chore, but an easy thing to do. So that's it for this week. Uh, and the next video is going to be on salt. You're going to want to catch that one because I'm basically I'm going to do an A to Z on mixing salt. And uh, until then, this is Scott, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.